Every year I see a bunch of people arguing on the internet about what's better for snow traction, low tyre pressure or high tyre pressure. Both sets of arguments have valid points. A higher tyre pressure gives you a smaller contact patch with the road, thus putting more pressure down to the surface, potentially offering more grip. On the flip side, low pressure like this tyre has a much wider contact patch which puts more rubber, more sipes, more flexibility in the tread pattern down to hopefully give you more grip. But which of these is right? Naturally, this is me, I'm a tyre tester, so I'm gonna test this properly and find out exactly which is best, hopefully once and for all to settle the arguments. I'm gonna be testing this excellent Prelli Citrata Winter 2 from 50 PSI all the way down to 10 PSI and 10 PSI increments. And I'm gonna be doing scientific-based snow traction, snow braking, snow handling, and if I get time, maybe even ice. So finally, once and for all, you guys can stop arguing on the internet because well, let's face it, that's never gonna happen, but this should be another good data point. I'm really excited to find out whether 10 PSI actually stays on the rim, or whether 50 PSI gives me more grip. Let's go find out. Snow, traction and braking. Now, traction, I think, is where this argument comes from because the question is, if you're stuck, is reducing your tire pressure really gonna help? Now, I am on a what's called a VDA. It's a big snow flat area. It's been prepared, it's been groomed, so every part of it, should at least have the as equal as possible. Now, we don't just do one acceleration and braking run and call it check. I've actually been doing 16, at least 16, because that's once up and once down this VDA for each tire pressure. Now, for the acceleration, this poor little, this is, this is a manual, so I'm measuring five. We start at five kilometers now because you've, the first little bit of the acceleration is just a little bit random as the traction control starts to kick in and everything. So we start at five and I'm ending at 35 because that's just before the red line in this car. So we're not having to shift gear. So there's no influence of me shifting gear. Then we're braking from 40. So that is on the very red line we've just past. I think, let me see, this poor golf has been screaming on the red line first. That's 50 kph indicated. It's about 45 uh, on the GPS. And then we're just braking down to a stop. Once we've stopped, we're not just starting again. I roll ever so slightly forward to get in some fresh snow that hasn't been messed up by the ABS. And then we're going again. So that is how much effort I'm putting in to try and put this argument to bed once and for all. And what has this poor little golf told us? Lower pressure is better. Traction especially, I'll put the data on the screen, but traction especially, it's been pretty linear. The lower the pressure, the better the grip is. And that's that's something that's fabulous. That's, that's something I'm very happy to tell you that lower pressure is better for traction. Braking, or well the braking did start to get better, but then the, the increase in braking ability uh, started to level off. Why is this? Um, I'm not sure, I'm spitballing here because I've just finished the test, but I think it's probably something to do with the fact that um, when you're braking, you're putting a lot more load on the tire. So uh, the pressure changing, although you're deforming more, there's just more pressure on the ground. How is this all gonna translate into handling? Well, hopefully the tire is gonna stay at 10 PSI. I don't even know if I'm gonna be brave enough to measure at PSI. I'm gonna have to speak to Prelli because I'm using their tires and uh, we'll see how confident they are that their tire will stay on the rim at 10 PSI because it's well below the recommended pressure. But yeah, let's switch over to handling and see how that goes. As we're currently learning just how important tire pressures are, I'm very happy to say that this video sponsor is Fantic, a multiple award-winning company with an excellent range of tire inflators. The three I have in front of me should cover every need you have. Naturally, they all have bright clear screens which you can read in the sun and accurate pressure gauges with auto shut off at your set pressure, everything an inflator should do. This, the Fantec X8 Apex, comes in this beautiful carry case. It includes a car charger so you can recharge it in your vehicle, a long hose, and it can be used as a power bank to charge your phone. Fantic claims it can inflate up to 20 tires on a single charge, which is very impressive. This little guy is called the X9 Pro, and it's the one you throw in your trunk or your backpack if you're out for a ride. It's lightweight, has everything built in, from the hose at the top to the attachments built into the bottom. It's a very clever design. And this big guy, whew, this is my favorite. It is the X9 Ultra. They say it's the fastest portable inflator on the market. It has a huge 92 watt hour battery in it. So not only will it quickly reinflate your tires, it also has 65 watt USB type C power delivery ports with two other ports. So I can go camping and run my laptop and all my phones and accessories off this. It's the dream. Fantech are starting a Black Friday promotion now with links and discounts codes of up to 40% in the description. We're discovering how important tire pressures are. Time to treat your tires. Okay, for snow handling. Now I am driving a little bit differently to how I normally drive. I'm just trying to keep it neat and tidy and I've left the traction control in sport. 
mostly because I can't turn it off in this Golf, thanks VW for that. So I started at 50 PSI. What did I notice? Well, the car felt pretty uncomfortable. That was probably the biggest takeaway. Now this is a graded snow course. I'm grading it so it's getting smoothed out between every tire pressure change, but still you get small micro imperfections and the car would just pick them up and rattle you around a little bit. Also, when the car turning felt pretty positive and quick, but then it would very quickly break into understeer and the car seemed to fight with the ABS systems quite a lot at 50 PSI. Now I'm now at 35 PSI. I'm not gonna do 40 out of 30. I'm just gonna do 50, 35, 20, and then if I feel brave, 10. But the car now feels much more compliant over the bumps. It's fighting the ABS systems a little bit less. Brakes feel more positive, and it's just, I mean, this is the stock pressure for the Golf, uh, and you can see why. Like, everything works really nicely. There's no surprises. The front end still feels positive, but maybe there's just a little bit more of a delay as we steer, but there's definitely more grip. And the lap time was a 120.6 at 35 PSI, and the best I could do at 50 PSI was a 122.1. So quite a bit of time saving. And I think a lot of that just comes from the fact the car's not really fighting the ABS systems. But let's drop down to 20 PSI and see what happens. 20 PSI feels awesome. I, I am very surprised. I thought this would be a boaty experience. And while like, everything does happen a little bit slower, like the steering definitely doesn't want to react um, how it did before. But when you're like turning and when you're braking and the traction out of the corners in particular is just outstanding. Like I, I, <laughs> I am really impressed. Now my lap time, I almost don't believe this, was a 118.8. That's two, over two seconds or nearly two seconds or around two seconds, I've already forgotten what it is, I'm very cold. But that's a drastic improvement. And where did that come from? Well, as I've already said, the traction out the corners, it's like I'm on a different category of tire. This Prelli Citrato Winter 2 is a very, very good winter tire. And it's been a pleasure to test with. But now I feel like I'm on a Nordic winter tire. Like I've just got that much more grip coming out of the corners. The, the imperfections and ruts on the circuit that were so frustrating at 50 PSI, they're almost gone. Like it's almost like I'm floating on air. And the car, like I say, once you're turning, like you steer, it, it just has, it hesitates and it thinks about it. Then it slowly settles onto the tire, but then it just grips and grips and you can ask so much more from the tire. So, holy smoke, I did not think I would have this much more improvement in time, but I, I have, like I really have. That's mega impressive, but 10 PSI. Now Prelia are very confident in their products and they say, oh, 10 PSI is no problem. I, I'm gonna believe them. 10 PSI, now quite how this tire is staying on the rim, I have no idea. Good work, Prelia. I'm sure it looks a mess on the GoPro footage I'm recording. Do not, and I repeat, do not run your tire this low on the road. 10 PSI, even in the snow, is well below recommended pressure. You risk damaging your wheel, your tire, you risk popping the tire off the rim. This is purely for science, and this is a closed course. This is Prelia's proving ground, so thank you to Prelia. Now, as for the handling, the track, you can, like coming out of corners as I am now, you can really get on the throttle. There is a bit of slip, but you can, you can feel that extra traction, but only really in a straight line. When you're turning, I don't know if I'm rolling onto the sidewall, or I don't know if the tire's just, just a, it's gonna be a mess at 10 PSI, but you do seem to lose a little bit laterally. So the lap time was a 118.1, very, very small improvement, but I'm not as confident Traction, like I say, is good. Braking, I don't really notice it, but the whole like transient braking and turning, just you're just kind of waiting for stuff to happen underneath you and it's not super predictable. But it has been a very fun experiment. So let's go and round up my thoughts. So now we have what is quite a clear trend that lower pressure is better in snow. I've gone and ruined that by doing ice. I said I'd try and do ice, I have. Ice is very difficult. And once again, ice has proved to be surprising. Now, for traction, there was an improvement, a bit small, between 50, 40, 30, and 20 PSI. So 20 PSI offered better traction than 50 PSI. But when I got to 10 PSI, even subjectively before I saw the numbers, I was like, this isn't as good. This is actually significantly down. And at 10 PSI, it was the worst traction of all five pressures. So that's intriguing. 
it's doubly intriguing when you combine it with braking, because at braking, 50 to 40, braking got better, and then 40 to 30, braking got quite a bit worse, and then 30 to 20, braking got better again, and then at 10 PSI, braking got significantly better. That means we have an inverse trend at 10 PSI. Traction got significantly worse and braking got significantly better. I don't know why. And you know what? Ice is so complicated, I'm not even gonna try and guess. So let me know what your own experiences are with tire pressures. I think we've pretty much solidly proven that the lower pressure is the better pressure. However, don't go down to 10 PSI. It's not worth the small advantage over 20 PSI, which seems to me the sweet spot and everything, the risk of damaging your wheel, damaging your tire, popping the tire off the rim and getting stranded. It's just not worth it. But dropping down to like a lower, maybe a 15 or even 20 PSI is going to give you traction advantages if you're at risk of getting stuck. So that is worth keeping in mind. However, as I said earlier, make sure you reinflate your tires because you're gonna get pretty serious uneven wear on the outer shoulders at such a low pressure. Anyway, a huge thank you to Prelli for supporting this test with their proving ground and their excellent Prelli Cinturato Winter 2. Go check it out and test, it's performing pretty well and Prelli's aftermarket tires are continuously improving. Any questions, please ask below. Let me know your own experiences and as always, safe motoring.